guys! Today I'm going to review the Wild Gaze. The Wild Gaze came out in 1978 and was directed by Andrew V. McCaglan. It's a war film about a group of mercenaries in Africa with an all-star cast. London's Leicester Square Theatre readies itself for the world premiere of one of the most exciting films to hit the big screen. Names like Richard Burton, Roger Moore, Richard Harris and Hardy Kruger. The producer was Ewan Lloyd. The producer wanted to make an all-star adventure film like The Guns of Navarone. It's interesting that both him and the director would return later to do The Sea Wolves in 1980, which starred several of the cast members from The Wild Geese. The screenplay for The Wild Geese was by Reginald Rose, and he based it on the novel by Daniel Carney. The film has a link to James Bond. The titles were done by Morris Binder, who also does the titles for the Bond films, and John Glenn, who directs five Bond films, is the second unit director in this film, as well as the film editor. The music was by Roy Board. The film runs 134 minutes. It cost $11.6 million, and it was one of the most popular movies in 1978 at the British box office. And the sequel was made in 1985 with a different cast. The film stars Richard Burton, Roger Moore... Richard Harris, Hardy Kruger, Barry Foster, Patrick Allen and Stuart Granger. The last backdrop of Africa and a script that really is packed with action. All the ingredients for a cinematic sizzler. The Wild Geese. So Richard Burton stars in this film and his character is hiring all these people who he used to work with in the past. They're nearly all middle-aged and a little bit past it. I don't care. Yes, you do. I'm finished with all of that. I'm getting too old. And by the way, so are you. So he gets them all together, he recruits them. He has to rescue this leader in Africa. He's imprisoned and they have to rescue him and put him on this aeroplane back. However, they get double crossed by the man who's hiring them. Stuart Granger's character makes a double deal behind the backs. So instead of the aeroplane coming to collect them, it just flies past them. So this film reminds us of a film called The Expendables. So it's like a, a, a 1970s version of that film. That film has like all these action heroes who are a little bit old, a little bit past it. So the, the similar films but in different decades. So Richard Burton, he's a, he's a great actor. He's got one of them distinctive voices. One of the best voices ever. And great eyes, he's good at staring. And these scenes, especially with um, Richard Harris, they, they work brilliant together in this film, them two. Richard Harris's character, he's worried about his son, in case anything happens to him. He makes Richard Burton's character promise to look after him if anything happens. And there's like really dramatic moments like that. If I buy it, I'd like you to see that my son is all right. Me? Yes. I mean, you hooked me into this thing. Don't you have any decent friends? Well, I've just made you his godfather. Roger Marzian, this is when he was really at his uh, most popular. It's between the films The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. So he's a big office drawer at the time. And it's brilliant, his introduction scene. He makes his drug dealer eat the cocaine. Because <laughs> he knows this girl who, who got some drugs off him and ended up dying. Now do it. Do it. All of it. I'm gonna pour it down. Hey, Phil, Roger Moore can be a hard twat when he wants to be. That had strictly in it. <laughs> Still, they say a little suffering is good for the soul. It may last 20 minutes. Have fun. Yeah, it's my favourite scene of the film, that Bones. It's Roger Moore at his best. So this kind of proves that he could have played James Bond very darker if he was allowed to. So the film's quite violent. There's a lot of action sequences involving blood, bad language as well. 
Hardy Kruger's got some good scenes where he's carrying the hostage on his back, giving him a piggy pack. And at first they don't like each other, but they, they become friends at the end. And it's quite a touching scene when, when he ends up getting shot. He's still trying to pick him up, but he can't. And you see blood coming out of his mouth. In fact, not many survive in this film. And you get to like the cast as well. When the when the training, because they're all in the 40s mostly, 40s and 50s. Some even older, I think. So it's quite sad when you see them getting shot and everything. Especially when Richard Harris's character gets killed. And Richard Burton shoots him. And he says he has to, otherwise they would have cut him to bits. For God's sake, kill me! No, no, God! I can't! Sean? I killed Rafer. Simbas would have cut him up into small pieces. And he's great at the end of the film as well, when he makes Stuart, Stuart Granger's character the one who set them all up. And he goes to his house and shouts them. But before he does that, he's offered money. He says he'll give him money if he doesn't kill him. But uh, he's not bothered about the money, he wants revenge. But I thought that was excellent, that. Not accepting his money. I had a speech prepared for you. I've been rehearsing it for three months. It was pretty good, as a matter of fact. All about the betrayals and dead friends. Kind of passionate requiem. And naturally, what a filthy, cold-blooded monster you are, etc. You see, I don't mind taking money from you. But having you offer me money for your life with all those bodies littering Africa, it is actually degrading. You can stick his bloody money right up his bloody ass. And this film has a few connections to the Bond series. The titles... And they do look like the James Bond film titles. You say like images and writing and like pictures inside the images. You also have John Glenn as a second unit director and a film editor. He directed five Bond films. And then you've got Roger Moore who's done seven Bond films. There's also some humour in this film as well like relief and a lot of diversity as well. There's like black actors, there's a gear actor. <laughs> Come along, Auntie. We'll find you a lovely little bit of tail. No, thanks, dear. You enjoy yourself. I'll be waiting up for you with bandages and penicillin. Have your buttons ready. He was a funny bugger, that bloody camp gear fella. <laughs> I thought he was going to burst into bloody song like Danny LaRue. Bop the candy. Yeah, he is a funny bugger, Bones. Watch you don't drop the bloody soap, lads. Backs to the wall. So overall I thought this was a, a top action film with some great dramatic moments as well. So out of ten I'd give it nine. Nine out of ten. I didn't give it one for you like it. Really good film feel. That Richard Burton's good. You should review the Medusa Touch. I like that one. In 1984. Yeah, I definitely will review them two films. They're excellent. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. Do I have time to get a divorce? 36 hours. Oh, lovely, sir. I can't wait to see his face. <laughs> <laughs>